welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes that you find some inspiration along the way. We are finishing up the first week of October, year 2021, and this is episode 70. Welcome if you are new here, and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. I love having this space to share with you what I am up to, and I love hearing what you are up to in the comments below. My videos do have closed captioning provided, and um, occasionally there will be text on the screen either to correct something I've said if I catch it in editing, um, or to provide extra information that I may have left out. Um, I also will provide links in the description box below to things that I talk about. There will be websites to designers, makers, um, and uh, Ravelry project pages to my projects will be in a separate section. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask questions in the comment section. Um, I do try my best to answer everybody's comments because if you take time to write something to me or to talk to me, I'd like to take the time to engage in conversation back with you. So thank you for being here. Um, in the beginning of this video, you will have seen some footage of a nature hike that we took recently. The weather has been so nice. Um, it rained over the weekend, which meant the weather cooled down a little bit. And um, we've had 50s uh, night and 60s, 70s during the day. And it has just been so nice and cozy. You can maybe sense the coziness here. Um, and the garden, we cut down all of the spaghetti squash and we discovered that the mystery squash or kind of the green variegated one is also spaghetti squash. Um, just from the few times that we've cooked some of them, it seems like it's a little bit softer maybe than the yellow variety, like the pale yellow ones. Um, and it tastes almost a little bit sweeter, but it could just be, you know, squash to squash. Who knows? But um, it has been so fun growing those and we have so many and we are enjoying them every day. It is so wonderful. We love spaghetti squash here. So that's the mystery solved on that spaghetti squash. It was just another spaghetti squash, maybe a slight different variety. Um, and the tomatoes are pretty much done. We've picked a lot of them. There have been some that I still need to just clean up and then we need to pull everything out. Um, the dahlias are doing wonderfully. This is kind of their season. They're slowly, I think, finishing up, but um, oh, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. We have them in a vase here with um, some of the leaves from the iris. So the iris stopped blooming earlier this summer, but their greens are still so vibrant and um, just absolutely beautiful. They stick straight up and kind of add nice height and lines um, to a bouquet. So we have been enjoying those. I'm trying to think, zinnias are still going. I think they're starting to slow down a bit, but they are still going strong. They are just such a joy and just having flowers blooming in the garden all summer and into the fall is just, it just brings so much joy, even when we're, when we're outside and even when we're inside because we can cut these flowers and bring them in and they add so much color. And every time you walk by, you can't help but smile. Our kids have also been cutting flowers to bring to our neighbors. Um, and who doesn't love a fresh bouquet of flowers, right? Ugh, I, ugh, we all love it. Oh, she even brought some to school for her teacher and, um, it, yeah, it's just so much fun. We, we absolutely love it. So today I have um, a couple finished projects to share with you, but I mostly wanted to talk about one specific one, and I don't believe I have any works in progress to share with you today because I have been working so hard on getting this one finished project done. I shouldn't say working hard. Like, I feel like working hard implies like this grueling task, but I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be. Uh, I've just been, I would like to say that I've just been focusing a lot of my time on this one project. Um, and then I made something to kind of go with it. Maybe a couple things to go with it. Well, anyway, grab a beverage and let's get right to it.
So today in my mug, I have hot cinnamon spice tea. It is a decaf black tea, and it's so good. Um, like I said, I, oh, I think I said, or maybe it was just in my head, I'm here for all things cozy right now. With the seasons shifting, you can feel it in the air, you can smell it in the leaves, you can hear the crunch of those leaves when you're walking, and oh, I live for the seasons. I, I love seasons. I finished my half and half triangles wrap. It's a free pattern by Pearl Soho and I knit it out of Pearl Soho's linen quill yarn and it's finished, it's finished. I'm gonna stand up so you can see me wearing it. It finishes to be a large square and you knit two triangles and there's no seam involved. It looks like there's a seam down the diagonal, but it's actually just created from the short rows. So my first color is this pinky taupey gray, and that is rose granite. And my second color is rosewood pink, which is a dusty, deeper pink. And it looks slightly heathered because of the linen content that doesn't take up the dye. Um, whereas the rest of it, it is the highland wool and the alpaca. Those are the fibers that take up the dye. You don't see it as obviously um, in the lighter colors since the linen is a lighter color. So it is all created in short rows. I cast on this rose granite color first and then your triangle um, gets smaller, or not smaller, I should say the number of stitches you work um, get shorter and shorter because you are making short rows and um, all those stitches will still stay on your needles. So your cast on edge is the full number of stitches of your um, width. So I cast on 260 stitches. I use the US 3 or 3.25 millimeter needles as suggested in the pattern. And then what I changed was instead of wrap and turns, I used German short rows because that is my preferred short row method on anything, on garments, on, well, on anything. And uh, you do end up doing it a little bit different from the instructions because German short rows, you're gonna go one extra stitch over, then like you stop um, before uh, for the wrap and turns. And then also, on this side, I, which is opposite side of the wrap and turns, I slipped the last three stitches to create kind of a rolled over edge. So when you get to the last three stitches, you bring your working yarn from the back to the front, you slip the three stitches from left hand needle to right hand needle, you turn your work, and then you just start knitting again because you, now your yarn is in the back already. And that kind of magically rolls the edge over. So I did that on this side. Now once I got to the pink, I decided to try something different and I didn't want to do three stitches, so I did two stitches. And I'll see if I can hold up the two together so maybe you can see a difference. So the pink, I only have two stitches on the edge rolled over, whereas on the first color I had three. So the edging is a little bit thicker. I think I like the two better than the three, only because I feel like um, it, I don't know, kind of blends in maybe better with the edging. I just like the look of it. It doesn't really matter one way or another. The pattern doesn't have you do that. The pattern just has a garter edge. Um, and that's totally fine too. The pattern has you purchase three skeins of each color, and that's what I did. But my yarn was very generous, or Pearl Soho is very generous because I didn't have 100 grams. I think the least, the smallest cake I had was 104 grams to start, and the most generous cake I had to start with was 110 grams. So I ended up only using about 20 to 25 grams of that third skein. 
So in total, I actually ended up using um, the same amount of yarn for each color, which I think in the pattern, your second color, it says you might use a little bit more, but I didn't find that to be how it worked out for me. My first color I used 236 grams and my second color I used 237 grams. So that's pretty cool. Um, I did want to have remaining yarn, which I knew I would have remaining yarn just looking at other people's project pages and um, hearing what other people were doing. And I plan on knitting a striped cardigan or striped pullover with the remaining yarns. And I do plan on knitting more of these wraps so with those colors I want to compile all of them together at some point to knit that striped um, top so I think that's gonna be really fun what else did I want to say about this I feel like there was some other numbering thing I wanted to say maybe not oh for the bind off I just did a regular traditional bind off but I did use a US 6 needle in my right hand to make sure I cast off or bound off um, loosely and what I liked about that and I didn't do an I-cord bind off to mimic my other rolled edging because I wanted this to mimic my cast on edge which I did an old Norwegian cast on also known as a German twisted cast on and I'll hold that up here they look very similar so that's it for that one more thing I wanted to mention how I wove in my ends. So there are different ways to do this, not a right way, wrong way, as what you want to do. Um, if you did do the rolled edging, some people like to hide their ends through that because it's almost like a tube. Um, the way I did it was I wanted to knit every yarn cake to the end before switching to the next one. So I would just knit until I had maybe like five inches left and just drop that join the next one, as in just start knitting with it. And then once I got a few rows in, I would um, cross those two tails because that would mimic like a loop for a stitch and then you won't have a hole. And then I duplicate stitched, so just followed how my patterning, my garter patterning went with those tails. And then once I got a few inches out um, or when I felt like stopping, I would just cut the remaining ends off. Um, and I tried a different method before where you kind of like twist it behind, but it, the tension of it didn't even out in a way that I liked. And so then I pulled that out and did it the way I wanted to. I mean, I, it's not like I can even find it in here in this beautiful sea of garter. I'm sure I could find it if I looked really carefully, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you one area where I did that duplicate stitch. Here it is. The only reason I know is I can see this tiny little itty bitty end sticking out. But once I stitch it in, it might be slightly thicker there, but um, in the, again, in the sea of garter, it's not really that noticeable. And for me, it just has to not bother me. It's so it's not so much if it bothers anybody else or people say, oh, no one will see it anyway. Well, I don't really care if anybody else sees it or not. It's if I care, right? So if it matters to me, then I will do it, do it differently. But if it doesn't matter to me, then I'll just leave it as is, right? So that's how I ended up weaving in my ends. And I wanted to share with you a few ways that I will be wearing it or plan on wearing it. Um, I did take a few photos um, of me wearing it um, and maybe I'll put some of those photos in the on the screen here because it's I don't space wise it's kind of hard to fit all of this in but there are multiple ways to wear this so I will put up some pictures on the screen now for you to enjoy.
All right, so in some of the photos that I shared earlier, um, you will have seen that I paired my shawl with a skirt. Now, this skirt is also a pearl Soho free pattern. It is, um, I think, gathered skirt for all ages or something like that. So I sewed mine out of linen and I absolutely love these big deep pockets. Um, I did learn a few new techniques. You have this panel here, which has your pocket in it and they give you um, different options for how you want to cut your fabric for the pocket. It is wide enough for a sock project. Now, since I just sewed this skirt, I haven't tried that yet, but I know it'll work because the size looks similar to some of my like really small project bags, like the ones if I'm just gonna take um, like a 25 or 50 gram ball of yarn out with me. So I know it'll fit. Let me readjust here. I was going to back up so you could see more of this skirt, but I think that's as far as you're going to see. So I am going to kind of readjust here so I can sit down and chat with you. So I've made gathered skirts before. Um, usually I just cut out either two rectangles or one long rectangle and have the seam down the back. Um, if I'm going to do kind of inseam pockets, I do two rectangles and then sew my pockets into those inseams. Um, but this one was, the pattern was a little bit different. You cut several pieces out. The waistband is a separate piece. You have a front panel, your back panel, your side panels, your pockets. Um, but that being said, I think all the pieces are rectangular. So that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> um, no curves to sew or anything like that. Um, and then I did have to make a couple changes because I think the pattern calls for using three quarter inch elastic, but I only had one inch. So then I had to cut my waistband um, the width wider. Otherwise, by the time I do all the folding, it's actually kind of neat because all of the raw edges are inside your waistband. So you don't see those at all. Um, I remembered how much I dislike basting stitches to then pull for the gathering. So I think I'm gonna have to look into what kind of gathering foot I can get for my sewing machine because that'll help um, relieve some of that mm, dislike, <laughs> maybe, we'll see. But um, yeah, so yeah, I learned that technique, so that was fun. Uh, the I did end up using my serger also because you do have some um, raw edges on the inside and they recommend you zigzag them but I just surged all like around on the edging for my pieces so I didn't have to deal with that. Um, what I did also like is that there is options for kind of modifying your length and width because you end up gathering to get to the width of your waistband. So if you did want a poofier skirt, you could always just make it poofier, like, or cut out longer pieces and kind of adjust once you got to that gathering part to fit into the waistband. The waistband, you measure the width of your hips. That way you can still pull the skirt up. And then the elastic, you measure for your waist and figure out um, where you want it to sit, like your natural waist or right above your hips. I probably, if I wanted to wear it higher, I would need to cinch in my elastic more, but I kind of wanted it to just sit. So this is the top of my hips here, right below the elastic waist belt part. So I kind of wanted it to just sit on my hips more. So um, I changed the measurement, I think, on the pattern for that. Um, yeah, but I love it. And it definitely matches my wrap. And of course, this isn't how I will only wear it, but it's a nice neutral. The fabric keeps showing up on images as more of a lavender. I mean, I think it's a cooler light brown, so kind of a lavendery brown color, which is neat because I feel like those kind of neutrals color shift depending on what you are wearing with it, which is kind of neat. So I like that. Um, I think I forgot to mention in this episode at least, that this wrap I'm calling my autumnal winter version because I don't usually gravitate towards like icy blues and grays, um, but this is kind of a cooler, cooler pink maybe um, for not like blue, but 
a grayer pink combo, maybe. So I'm calling it my autumnal winter version. And as I had mentioned earlier that I'm a very seasonal person, I do plan on casting on more of these wraps and as long as I enjoy it, I will have one on the needles and they will be seasonal because that's just who I am. Um, I cast one on during the autumnal equinox that is in dark iris and chestnut red. I will pop a picture of the yarns that I'm using here up on the screen. I cast those on um, several weeks ago and I haven't touched it since because I really wanted to finish this one. So now that I've finished this one, I can go back to that and I am so excited for it. Um, it is kind of perfect for this season and the weather and cloudy days and moodier days and it just kind of goes really well with the time. So, and I can be knitting that while I wear this one, which is so nice. Now the other thing I made to go with this Yes, it is the same linen as my skirt. Um, I was looking for a shawl cuff, but I was hesitant to get the ones that I saw like that are like upcycled belts and stuff because I wasn't sure if I wanted brass or like metal next to my neck, only because if it's like really cold, the metal gets cold, right? And I don't want to feel like a cold metal thing on my neck. Or if it's really sunny and you're wearing it out, I don't want to feel a really hot metal thing on my neck. Um, so I decided just to make one. And actually I made several, but uh, it is interfaced because I need it sturdier because if it's wrapping around something real tight and there's a lot of pressure on it, I don't want it to just buckle in. And then I have these cam snaps that I've used for various crafty things and I just kind of guessed at how wide and how long to make it and I made a whole bunch of them but I have my cotton tag on it which is fun so I sewed that on and I'll show you how I have it on here so it just keeps it a little bit more in place now it doesn't have to be that way um, because if I want it over my shoulders it doesn't always work great to have it that way and of course this is reversible so it doesn't really matter which way I have the shawl cuff uh, facing. But yeah, it just snaps right in. It doesn't pop off. It's, it's pretty tight on there, but it just keeps it a little more secure on there. And I can have it more in the back or in the front. It really doesn't matter, but it just keeps it on nicely. So yeah, I'm really excited about those. So I think that is all I have for you today. Um, things are going well here. Again, the weather is amazing and making us all feel super cozy. The kids are doing well at school, but ready for the weekend, ready for a little break and just do whatever they want to do, color whenever they want to color. Um, I would love to say sleep in, but you know, kids don't do that. <laughs> so they will be sleeping in, but that's okay. We are, you know, often on our best in the morning here. So we are okay with that. Um, we will probably be hiking and spending time outside because that is what we enjoy doing. Um, yeah, so I hope you are doing well. I hope you are taking care of yourself and your loved ones and finding time to or making time to be at peace, to feel joyful, to laugh. Oh, I feel like these days you kind of forget how many days or weeks maybe have gone by since you last laughed. Not that you should be counting, but like laughter doesn't seem to come by as um, organically, maybe isn't the right word, but just as frequent. So I hope you find some laughter. Um, yeah, I hope you find some laughter. Cheers to being creative, and I will talk to you next time. Take care. <laughs>